con Prime recibes bombillas en un día? Edison estaría orgulloso. Uh -huh. Orgullosísimo. Recibe rápido los esenciales diarios. Prime lo cambia todo. Become a volunteer at New Leaf Community Garden in downtown Newnan. Located at 32 South Byte Avenue, our purpose is to educate, feed, and nourish the people of Noonan through a sustainable community garden. We always welcome extra hands in the garden and can accommodate volunteer group projects. We also have raised beds available for lease for beginner and experienced gardeners. Join us on most Saturdays between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. at 32 South Byte Avenue. Or visit our New Leaf Community Garden Facebook page to learn more. Hi, it's Ariel from the Sustainable Brown Girl Radio Show. My absolute favorite place to shop in downtown Noonan is Greenhouse Mercantile on East Washington Street. This aesthetically pleasing lifestyle store features a collection of goods from local artists, black-owned businesses, and fair trade products. The owner, Kenya, also offers services to curate your wardrobe and make your home a sanctuary with interior design. Next time you're in downtown Noonan, be sure to stop by Greenhouse Mercantile. Open Wednesday through Saturday until 4 p.m. Welcome to Connecting Hearts. Connecting hearts of women to resources, information, and to one another. Presented by Creative Heart Studios, 18 Perry Street and New. Now here's your host, Margie Conway. Hi, I'm Tracy Brooks. I'm the owner of Great Style Salon, located next to the Little Giants Grocery Store at 487 Jackson Street, right off of 29. Our hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Fridays, we're open from 12 noon until 4. Saturday, Saturdays, we're open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please come check us out. We specialize in hair cutting and great scalp massages. And right now, I'm looking to hire two great hairstylists. Come check me out. Hi. I'm Margie Conway, the Joy Coordinator at Creative Hearts Studios, and this is a Connecting Hearts Network broadcast. Um, we have a great guest with us today. It's Michelle Mashburn. She is a local artist, and we're going to talk a little bit about her book. But first, I want to fill you in on all the people God's brought in and out this week that I've gotten to hang out with. Um, I got to go meet an old boss who you're going to hear about, and when COVID hit, the hardest over around Peachtree City and at our hospital, she like pulled things together to support our nurses in those areas. And she's going to join us as one of our sponsors as that comes up. And speaking of sponsors, you keep seeing ads for Pina Payne, and we haven't gotten her on the microphone yet, but she has moved offices. So I'm going to tell you that Cross Country Mortgage is now at 560 Noonan Crossing Bypass, Suite 110. So if you do like I did and wash your car up and then pull in their old parking lot where all the dust and the dirt and the grime is and get your car dirty again they're not there anymore because i walked upstairs it was all empty because i made it on moving day so they are now over right behind art and jake's off the bypass around ashley park and you can walk in the door and find them and they have all kinds of services in there uh, that you can take advantage of then another person that i ran into this week is i went to an awesome class um, that was about gardening and herbs you can do at your house um, for medicinal purposes and it was God's garden girl and Tanisha sat there and taught me who is not a gardener but I love my oils and natural remedies all kinds of things that we could use for that and we're going to have her on the show in a couple of weeks and she's going to talk to us about how God brought her to where she is and teaches her what she needs to know to be able to teach us so now we're going to introduce Michelle this is Michelle Mashburn she is a local author she has written Conquering COVID-19 with Christ. It is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Nobles and a couple other places and at Walmart. I got my copy of it the other day and read through it, and I highly recommend that you read the book. I think it is a really good statement of how to grow stronger in your faith when you're going through trials and tribulations because, girl, you have been through it. There's no doubt about that, and I'm grateful to be here today to to remind people just how wonderful God is and what he can bring you through. Michelle um, has a unique story about COVID, and I guess it's not that unique because a lot of people have been through it, but the uniqueness of hers is her faith in God. 
Um, and a lot of us that caught COVID have great faith in God, but Michelle mobilized hers on behalf of her husband when he caught COVID. Well, I know that a lot of people have uh, commented on me being a prayer warrior for him while he was going through the thick of it because he was in a situation to where he couldn't pray himself. Right. So I had to fill in that gap and uh, be that advocate for him as in prayer, you know, for his his whole faculty, everything, his health, his mental, and all of it. And the situation being is I couldn't be there physically, but thankful to God I had the avenue that he surrounded my husband and me spiritually. And that is a vital, important aspect of this whole thing. And you're absolutely right, because that was in the thick of COVID when it was the worst, and we were isolated in our homes. When the patients were in the hospital, they couldn't have any visitors, and most of them were sick enough, like Terry got, where they couldn't talk on the phone much and things. And so a lot of us felt very limited in what we could do at that time. I was very limited myself as far as being isolated in my own home because I had COVID. I was positive for over a month. And uh, people didn't know that much about the virus at that time because it was at the beginning. And they kept telling you to uh, isolate, don't be around people until you're negative and things like that. And I was, like I said, positive for over a month and I just had to stay away from people because it was so unknown on what this would do if you were to go around other people, even if you were not contagious at that point point or not because it was just so much unknown about it right and so you know God has done this with many people you can read it in the Bible and everything but he's isolated you and gave you time alone with him so that's where you could concentrate at and um, I I can't imagine being in the position because like I told you on our way up the stairs my concern at that point was my husband with heart problems and diabetes would get it And when he did get it, it's like he had a 24-hour virus, and that was it. And there's no reasoning except I kept pushing the vitamins and pushing the Gatorade. And and, and like we were talking, he was out at work every day. But, you know, I thank God every day he didn't catch it because I'm not sure he would have been, you know, that blessed at that point. Um, First thing I want to hit is she has written this book and had it published. And there are a lot of people I know that say, I'm going to write a book. And I'm one of them. When my mom passed, we had her journals, and this is all on my website. And I read her book that she promised, made my son promise that I wouldn't change. And I'm like, okay, finally, she's going to come clean about these details and these arguments we've had in our life. And because there was a lot of abuse, you know, when I was growing up, and she got the brunt of it. But when I read her book, I was disappointed because she wasn't that honest in the book. You know, I guess it was her viewpoint on it, but... And she did at the end say, I made a lot of decisions that made things hard for us, but I would do it again. And I'm like, huh? So I said, I'm going to write a book. And I was going to title it, The Lies My Mother Believed in the Truth That I Know Is True. Because the truth is what got me out of it. (laughs) All right, so what made you decide you needed to take all these journal entries and you needed to make a book? Well, I know a friend had guided me to write down information that I was getting from the hospitals and uh, all the other medical uh, physicians and nurses and things so that I would get the information correct for one thing and to keep up with his medical information and I wrote it all down in this journal so after it was all said and done when he was in the L uh, not the LTAC but the rehab I decided to take that journal with me to share with him what I had went through and then that's when God started moving and guided me toward down the direction of writing a book but also when he gives you that push to do something he backs it up with confirmation right and i already had somebody in my life who was writing a book through uh, the same publisher that i did and uh, my pastor's wife Lori hosmer she she uh, guided me on the steps on how to get started and i am living proof if if you know me you know that it's not in me to do something like this so it's all god because Uh, I write things uh, in ministry or just in general, uh, just a a note or something. And there's so many typos and errors in it. And God took over and he wrote the pages because it was his story through my life. And I'm just so grateful that he allowed me to have this uh, avenue to be able to write down the things that he was working through, not only in my life spiritually, but in my husband's life on the medical aspect of it. 
Right. And if you could see Michelle while she's talking about that, all of a sudden her shyness disappeared and her eyes are sparkling, and she was explaining it very well. And that's one thing I can attest to, too. When God gives you something and you say yes and act on it, um, he takes the reins. He leads you where you're going. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting in this radio seat. Um, and he, he's done that with you. I am sure this is going to bless a lot of people. And I'm, I'm sure it was helpful to you to be able to write it down and to get it going. It was helpful to release some of that, uh, the issues that I've had, a whole lot of issues that I've had. It wasn't just one, it was many, like being the separation from my husband, mm -hmm. not having that right to be in his room with him for two months and helping him. He, there was so much confusion that he shared with me that he stayed in the state of where am I? Why am I here? Does my wife know that I'm here? Uh, and just on and on like right. that. And I'm thinking I could have helped with that. But then I, I kind of understand on the other end that it was a contagious virus and they had to keep it contained. My mind understands that, but my heart just oh, yes. wasn't there. And I kept going back and forth with that because I wanted so much to help him and to be there. And I was so anguished about it. Right. But then through all of it, through the anguish and the unknown and what was going to happen, even though I never got confirmation from God that he was going to make it, I felt God wrapping around me, you know, for for a vivid picture for what we know of as a snuggie wrapped around right. you. You know, it was all consuming, and I I felt what they were feeling in the Bible in those times, and it was it was the most remarkable moment of my life going through that. That's good, and it's good that you're able to share it because when we do step out and do what God says, He does bless it, and and it's going to be so with this book. I read it over the first couple of days. It says a husband and his wife's account of a physical fight versus a spiritual fight while battling COVID nineteen, and I love the layout that she has in the book. Um, I'm a word nerd. I just love anything with word games, and and there's like an acronym for COVID in here twice. One is the acronym for the negative side of how we would feel and the other is the acronym for the positive of what God is mm -hmm. and what God will do and so when you're reading it she says here's where we were and I want to share this and and so she's written these minutes for her to remind member but then like she said she used them for Terry um, in chapter one you have from concern to the comforter you want to make a comment on how your concern was led to the comforter there well this virus, when it began in my husband, it seemed very mild that he was going to, we were even talking about him coming home. Mm -hmm. And I was making arrangements for him to come home because he still had to quarantine away from us. Well, that turned to uh, him going, spiraling down more and more with a high fever, 104, 106, really high fever. And then he started having breathing problems. So it was in those moments that, of course, I would be concerned about him where would this lead because it was so unknown and being the uh having the knowledge of what christ is in me and how much comfort he was giving me over my life it just took over in that aspect that he was there with me no matter what the unknown was it, it, it didn't matter he was there even though i was by myself I, right jesus was beside me holding me through every situation that was going on with this whole unknown virus that basically the whole world was riding right. this whole wave of the unknown, unknown together. And, and she writes in the book that not long after he entered into the hospital through the emergency room that she was diagnosed positive. And so she was at the house alone with that. Well, your son lives with you, right? He was with me and he was con he continued to work during this time right he he stayed away from her and stayed contained so he could work but she was at home alone during this time she couldn't do like some of us do and, and even though we weren't supposed to we would meet with our families or meet with our church family or something um, and I remember seeing posts on Facebook when that started um, you started right off at the beginning saying Terry is in the hospital I need you to pray for this and as time went on your request went from general to specific things for us to pray for and you listed the vitamins and the things that you were taking at the house yourself as you were doing that so her chapter two says from overwrought to overcomer how did that process work out a little bit well it's it's just knowing throughout my whole life not just with the COVID but with other situations in my life God has helped me so much to overcome many many things that I could 
list a number of things that he has helped me through. One was when I was born with hydrocephalus. Mm -hmm. He helped me to to deal with that and, and all the things that comes along with the symptoms and all with that and living with that. But my whole life, he is, I feel that he has guided me to the point to where my I would be what my husband needed to overcome the virus and to be what he needed with God's help. And that's exactly what that chapter two uh, entails about even though I was going through this roller coaster of of things that was unknown, very new, hardly there was hardly anybody that I mm -hmm. knew that was going through it. You had to just go through it to know what I'm talking about. It was just unreal that he was the only one that would be able to help me to overcome this. People were where people couldn't help. God was everything. He was the helper. He was he was the overcomer in my life and that's what he showed me. And I want to remark on the second half of Michelle's book now at this point because the second half of the book is my memorable moments memoir. And she has a statement in there about you writing your moments down when God has been there for you. And like she said, she could remember back in her life, God has helped her overcome all these things. And even in the Bible, they would, God would tell them, build an altar here so you can tell your children when they come by. And so I don't have altars at the house, but I do keep the journals and I, I have pictures of things and stuff to say, here's what God has already done for us. And here's where he will be able to help us again in whatever way that that happens. So the back of the book is for you to write your own things down so that you can remember where God's helped you and what's going on. So when you get to a point that you need that reminder, um, it's there. Because I can guarantee you, if she started at overwrought, um, you were not a happy camper and you were not pleased with what God was doing. And as Christians, one thing I hear from patients, or not patients, one thing I hear from clients when they come in to talk to me or we're in some of our groups, um, I know that God's gotten me through this, so I should be blessed, but I'm angry because it's changed the physical expression, and that makes me feel guilty. And it even tells us in the Bible, Job was upset with God. David was upset with God. They said, why, God, did you do this? Mm -hmm. If you read the Psalms, you'll see it all the way through there. David is questioning him. And even when he was having the loss of a child, he, he rent his clothes, he went into mourning, he prayed to God. But then he knew who God was, so he got up, he pulled himself together, and he said, okay, you know, we're, we're moving forward from here. And so when it comes to questioning God or getting upset at God's choices, what do you think about that? Well, the overall situation with the book itself uh, during the COVID, my questioning was why my husband, he is healthy. He does not have any underlying health conditions. And here he is, uh, his health is declining so much, and he's headed toward a vent. Mm -hmm. And I just, they, I just didn't understand. I, I don't really know if I question God. I just didn't understand in the whole medical aspect, why was this healthy man in such decline when there are far right. worse off people who got the virus and recovered and didn't wind up like he did? Right. I, there was no understanding at that point for me about that. And I just knew that even though I didn't understand the whole uh, physical part of it all, I knew spiritually that in the unknown that God, he, he, right. he held it all in his hands. He knew right. what the outcome was going to be. And he was guiding me toward accepting whatever that outcome was going to be. Right. So as far as overall, it's, 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 the, it's the faculty, the same thing that I've been going through in my whole body, my whole faculties, that it takes you through every emotion you could ever imagine. The heartbrokenness and the unknown and the uncertainty and the just your body wrecked from the virus itself and just helplessness that you can't be there for the one that God made for you, mm -hmm. your husband, the job that you're supposed to do as a wife, you couldn't do that right. because you were forced to stay home and isolate. And it just, it just fell on me like a ton of bricks. And the overall feeling is just, it's all consuming. It, mm -hmm. 
in every way. And it's a situation that you just have to go through it to know what I'm talking about. It's like nothing I've ever been through before. And I knew that there was only one, one person that could help me through it because he's been through it, and that's Jesus. That's it. And, and I think you answered to the next chapter because the next chapter is from the void to the vine. It's when we don't know what God is doing. We have to live through God and our faith in him. Definitely. And even though it seemed like the life was taken out of me, the vine is what was giving me strength because the nourishment and the, the food and all to survive comes from the vine, which is Christ Jesus. Right. And he helped me so much. He was, it was like he was in that room physically with me, talking to me and, and nurturing me this whole, this whole entire time when I was separated from my husband and had no idea where it was going to go. Some people, they know they have an idea of where mm -hmm. a situation is going to lead. I had no idea. I did not get confirmation that he was going to make it until I went to rehab with him and saw right. it with my eyes. And that's uh, how God worked in this situation. I'm just so thankful for the power that he had in my life and the fact that him being the true vine, that he gave me all the nourishment and the things that I needed to be able to make it through this nightmare that I lived. And my reality uh, it, it, that God helped me through it's like no one can take that away from me because right. it, it was the truth. It was God's given truth to my soul, and I will never forget that. That She talks in here about, you know, she couldn't see him for a while. She could hear him on the phone, but it was hard when he had, he, he started going from breathing tubes to vents and things to understand or have time to talk to him till they went to move him to ICU, and then what it was the long term where they would just give you one report a day and you could yes. just call and get one report a day one report right and it was very stilted at that point on what they actually gave you and i think at that point it was probably because they they didn't know as much to be able to comment more on things yes and i would get the information stable no change on propofol and fentanyl that's all i could hear from them day after day and it was frustrating because I needed detail. I needed to know progress. And sure, he wasn't on his feet and up and going at this time, but there had to be more than just that. Right. And it was very limited information. And I, I'm so thankful that they worked with him to get him walking and talking because they did. And I'm very grateful for uh, all of the medical uh, hospitals and the uh, LTAC and the rehab that helped him along the process but most of all i'm thankful for god that he took my husband from death's door to back at work now right. and uh thriving and surviving beyond anything that is that w that came out of right. the med medical people's mouths because a couple of them didn't think that he was going to make it right and that to me is when the medical doesn't have an explanation, God does. That's it, and and that's absolutely true. He is the answer to anything that you go through and any problem that you have. Um, I know when I was doing my counseling classes, the instructor would say, all right, here's when we deal with this situation, some ways in Scripture and things to help you deal with it. He said, but in reality, we know they need Christ or they need to surrender fully to Christ. He said, but they're not going to admit that. So here's how we start with this and start with that. And and it's, you know, you have seem to have a lot in common with me because I followed you for years. And <laughs> now my Ryan's making me laugh instead of me making him laugh. And, and I followed for you for years. We both did children's ministry through our right. church. We served at the church. Um, you know, it seemed to be a lot of what our lives was, was our church family and our family, our children, our grandchildren, our immediate surroundings. And I know when you were at home alone and you weren't getting much information, if you're like me in that aspect, you were Googling to see what was happening at this point or what was at that. And in the situation I was where we didn't, we had COVID, but we didn't get it to that extreme there was enough out there that I got a little concerned, so I can see mm -hmm. how you would be in that problem. Well, I have uh, remember talking to a nurse one time, and she kept telling me that, that he has a couple of bacterias in his body, and I'm thinking, well, what's their name? Right. 
and they didn't give me the names because they knew what I would do, that right. I would go and search it out. And they told me that it would look a lot worse than what it actually is. And, you know, knowing that I'm not a doctor, of course, I could understand that reasoning. But I did uh, get at least one bacteria he had in his body, but the other one is still a mystery. And I'm actually pretty glad about that. Right. Sometimes we're better if we don't know everything. All right. The last two she has in here, because we are having such a good conversation, we are going to have to consider this one uh, again. Um, the last two she had was from incapacitated to I am, at which point she has... And, and, and the next one's from despair to deliver, and that's where she's already answered you that even when we don't know what the answers is, and we don't, we we have questions, and sometimes we don't even know what the questions are. We know the answer is God; that He has it firmly in His hand; that He is watching out for us, and He is taking care of us. When you had questions, and you're like why is my husband going through this when he's healthy and all these things um, now that your book's on the shelf and you're starting to hear from people about your book do you have a little bit of an idea why it might be i do and it all goes back to the verse that with all things uh, uh with god it's possible right. it, it is very much possible when the situation looks so dire and that he might that my husband might not make it even even in that god was bringing me to the possible and right. I kept saying this is a hard situation it's not impossible because I know as a, being a follower of Christ that all things are possible with Christ in your life that's it I suggest you read the book because even if we're we're through the worst of COVID um if you're having trials and tribulations, it talks about building your faith and turning to God through those trials and tribulations. So I'm sure that it is going to bless many, many people. Um, we're going to do our best to spread the word about it. And on April 23rd, the Holistic Health uh, Chamber of Commerce is going with Ashley Park and having Community Wellness Day up at Ashley Park from 12 to 4. Our Connecting Hearts Network has a table up there. If you want to come up and sign some books, that would be awesome. Um, I'm going to ask you to sign mind before we part today um, we will have you know just different members from our connecting group will be up there at different times to talk with you you know we have Pina's going to show up to talk to you about the mortgages and some of them you've already heard and some you haven't heard on the broadcast before are going to be there um, just to meet you and to hand out more goodie bags that we've been handing out all over town so we invite you to join us up there and next week our guest is going to be Tanya Lee who is the president of the Chamber of the Holy Chamber of Commerce. Um, I love Tanya. She's been a friend and a mentor of mine for years. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Wellness Day and a little bit about what you can do to take control of your own wellness. All right, so I always look at Ryan like, how, how much time do I have? Because I always keep trying to put my timer on my phone, and I keep doing it wrong. But we have one minute. Michelle, if you could say one thing to our audience, what would that be? The one thing that was resonating in my soul when I was going through all this is that the devil is a liar. Don't listen to him. Yeah. God is number one, and he will tell you the truth over what the devil has to put in your mind and soul any time that you're going through anything, not just COVID, but this book can be for any situation yes. that you go through that you can know that God is going to be there if you seek him, and he will take care of what all of the devil has to throw at you to get you, get your mind off of him. Absolutely. Uh, my pastor passes out a card, and on one side it says, the devil hates your, Satan hates your guts, and on the other side it says, but God loves you. That's right. And, That's and he hands those out all over time and uh, all over town, and that is entirely true. Satan hates your guts. He's out to destroy you and tell you lies, but God is there to, as the answer and to love you and to tell you the truth. And that's one big reason we want this broadcast. That's why I have my studio is so we can pass that and I recommend that you go on Amazon, you go to Walmart, you go to Barnes & Nobles, you get the book. Um, it's a thin, easy read, and it will uplift you and help you if you're having trials. It's, it makes a great gift, too, at this point. So I thank you for coming on and talking with us today. I think it was the perfect show for us to have at Easter week when we're celebrating Christ's resurrection. Thank you. It was such a blessing and another God moment, and I'm just so happy that this book is out to maybe help others and hopefully guide them toward uh, the way Jesus can help them through their situation that seems impossible. 
Absolutely. So look for us on social media. Walk up and down Perry Street, open doors up, Neil Margie, till I come out of that room in the back and say, here I am. And I'll be happy to talk with you about God as answer any time of day that you want to. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in to Connecting Hearts, Connecting Hearts of Women to Resources, Information, and to One Another. Presented by Creative Heart Studios, 18 Perry Street, here in Noonan, 404-528-8461. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Hi, I'm Tracy Brooks. I'm the owner of Great Style Salon, located next to the Little Giants Grocery Store at 487 Jackson Street, right off of 29. Our hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Fridays, we're open from 12 noon until 4. Saturday, Saturdays, we're open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please come check us out. We specialize in hair cutting and great scalp massages. And right now, I'm looking to hire two great hairstylists. Come check me out. Hi, guys. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Sarah's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. Driving cross country with two young children is ambitious, to say the least. Then our check engine light came on. We pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts and they tested it. Turned out it was a faulty sensor. They referred us to a great mechanic just down the street and we were back on the road in no time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Texting privacy policy in terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting and rules for occurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply. Stop, opt out. The pandemic has been hard on all our kids. New studies show more than one in three children who started school in the pandemic now need intensive reading help. That's right. Millions of kids in kindergarten through third grade in the United States cannot read at grade level. Here's the good news. Your child can be reading in just 30 days, guaranteed, with Hooked on Phonics. Even if your child has been struggling, Hooked on Phonics will teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. And right now, you can get started for just $1. Text the word GRADE to 323232 right now. Hooked on Phonics is highly effective and incredibly fun. And everything can be done right from home and in less than 20 minutes a day. For more than 30 years, Hooked on Phonics has been the proven learn-to-read program that kids love to use. Text GRADE to 323232 and teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. Text GRADE to 323232 right now and get started for just $1. Text GRADE to 323232 now. Text GRADE to 323232.